All right, so let's make a handheld fireball. So you're going to need, you know, whatever clip you're looking to add this effect on. If you're going to use the same fireball as I am, there will be a link in the description below. And there are licensing requirements on there, so just be sure to check that out before you add it to your project. And you could use whatever audio effects you would like or even make your own. For me, I'm using Space Tunnel and Ambient Hum Pitch, which I grabbed off YouTube Studio. Okay, so let's get to it. So I like to do all of my work, well, as much as I can on the Edit tab. So I'm going to just drag in my starting clip. And if I expand audio one, uh, you'll see there's actually no audio in this clip. Ooh, great face I'm making here. There we go. And uh, so to get rid of this and just to keep our timeline simple, uh, I'll select the clip, uh, which will select both the audio and video tracks. I'll right click and unlink the clips. Now I'm going to select just the audio clip and press backspace. So next I'm just going to select this clip and then come over to the fusion tab and click on that. So this is going to give us just a media in and a media out. So what I'm going to do is just kind of rearrange this since we will be adding a whole bunch of nodes down here. Uh, so for this, since the entire clip is here, you'll see the start and finish lines, which are highlighted in orange here. And this red line is going to be our, you know, our position. And all these numbers here represent what frame it is in the clip. This green bar is also letting you know it's rendered status. So if it's green, it means it's rendered and will play smoothly. So the first thing that I'm going to do is keyframe the actual fireball in our scene. At a certain frame, I'm going to want the fireball to appear. Um, so for example, when my hand is closed, I do not want the fireball to be displayed. However, as soon as my hand is open, I want the fireball displayed. So I also kind of want it to grow as my hand is opening up. Uh, so we'll be doing that as well. And same thing for the end of the clip. As I close my hand, I want it to disappear. So what we're gonna do is, well, keyframe this in. So naturally the first thing we need to do is get the fireball asset on this tab. So to do that, you could simply click and drag and now I have media two, but you'll notice that it's not being displayed. That is because we need to merge these two assets before media out. So with media in selected, we need merge, um, which is visible. Uh, right here on this toolbar, you can see it says merge. Another option you could do is press control and space and just start to type merge and select merge. And for here, it's important to, to understand what these arrows are. So the blue arrow is an effect mask and we're not really adding uh, a mask anywhere. Um, the yellow is going to be background and the green will be foreground. And so the background, if you think about the layers, we want to be, you know, the original clip and the foreground is where we want our fireball. So I'll just drag this over to the green one and it will switch to the blue and green arrows. So it is a nice, neat format. And then I could grab the gray box, which is output and drag that into media out. And now you'll see, well, we just have both of those scenes on top of each other being rendered. Okay, so we obviously want this smaller. Uh, so you're going to make sure you're on the merge node. And if I come over here and just start moving this arrow, you'll see it will reposition this asset and I can move this up as well. You could also come over here and drag these X and Y axis. Uh, since this is too big, uh, I'm actually going to decrease the size. So let's try, you know, just shrinking it by a third. And I'm going to come into the scene just a little bit, um, just so I could position this where I want it to be. And somewhere like there looks good. and that'll be a real good starting point. Now, since this is the perfect size for when it is fully grown, 
I am going to find right where my hand is fully open, right here, and come over to size and click this diamond. And this is gonna add the keyframe, meaning at this point in time, it will be at 0.33. Now we need to find the starting point, which I think would be about right here. And then I'll click on this keyframe icon again, only I will drag the size to zero. And if I come to the beginning, it will be zero. So if we press play, there we, there we go. Now we need to do the opposite to make it disappear. So right before I, I close my hand, so right here on frame 111, I'll click the keyframe icon again. And then I want to find right about here where my hand is almost closed. So about here. Click the keyframe again and drag the size to zero. So if we look at what we have so far, close. It's just stationary while well, you have some hand movement here. And so naturally I want to add a tracker. So to do that, I'm going to come to media in one and make sure that is selected. I'll press control and space and type in tracker. I'm going to select planar tracker right here and click on add. So now this is going to have me select an object that it's going to track and I want it to track my hand. So what I'm going to do is well just outline my hand. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could definitely be imperfect, just like the world. Awesome, so now I have it outlined. I'm actually gonna come over here to the inspector and click on set. And this is going to set it on frame 69. Nice. Then I'm, for motion type, I'm going to select translation and rotation. And then I will come to track to end and select that. I'll select go to bring me back to my original frame. And then I'll go to track to start. And of course you could do it in the reverse order. You could do track to start before track to end. But now we're going to have our hand tracked. And so I'm gonna click on create planar transform kind of drag this down a little bit and what I want to do is bring this into the input and grab my output and bring that as the foreground so now if we press play You'll see there's some motion in the fireball now because it is being tracked with the hand. We're almost done. Now this clip is still pretty boring in its current state. And well, that's because audio is very important. So I have these two. So I have these two sound samples. Let's kind of hear what they sound like. Okay, so it's definitely an ambient pitch. And that's just kind of like a cool scene. It almost reminds me of like outer space or something. Um, so I'll take space tunnel and I'm just going to cut this clip. So I'll do control B, which is a shortcut for the blade tool. And then you could just cut off that back half and this ambient hum pitch. Well, I don't need that much of it either, so I could, eh, let's have fun and do it the other way. Cool, so this is what I have right now. Which is pretty close. 
So I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of a fade in and maybe a little bit of a fade out. Actually, let's see, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So this is actually lining up pretty well. I just really need to cut it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is try to line up the start of this peak right here when the fireball is open fully. Some right there and then only have the audio start once the fireball effect starts to come in. And I'll just select this node here and just try to put it on the line. And that should give me a nice fade in. Awesome, so now I just want to fade everything out while my hand closes. Awesome, and after playing around with these faders, this is the final result. Now, what we can also do, if you want this to be a little bit more, is you could play around with the volume levels as well.